what, what's your reaction to what Chenderai said and its application here at CBC? Oh, finally, somebody's <laughs> talking about this. Good. Yeah, I've been here for like 14 years, and this is the first time that I hear us yeah. uh, tackling the issue. Um, I agree with him. I think we, we sound white, and if uh, all we have is sound, and we're not reflecting the, the uh, diversity of accents that we hear uh, outside of our doors, then we're not doing a good job at diversity. I call it the diversity facade. <laughs> you know, all of our, our hosts have amazingly diverse names, but they all sound sure very, very hmm. white. And why do you think it took so long to, to initiate this conversation? Well, I think that there has to be a political will at the very top of any corporation to actually make it happen at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it just, I don't think it's there. And Nick, what do you think of, of how this applies at CBC? Well, I, I agree with um, some of the things that uh, I heard from your, your, your previous guests. I mean, I, I'm also myself someone who used to do code switching himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, before I was a manager, I was a producer of a radio show, and I used to also be on air for many, many, many years. And I always remember the first piece I tried to do um, was a, I was doing a piece for a basketball game. I was covering the Raptors, and I had to come back and voice. It was the very first piece I ever did for CBC. Hmm. And I was in the studio for, I swear to God, the game ended at 10.30. It was almost 12.30, 1.30 in the morning. I still was trying to voice it to make it sound right, you know, like make it sound like it's perfect for CBC. Mm. And the engineer in the booth is like, well, just do it again, do it again, do it again. And I was so frustrated. I was like, you know what, this is just never going to air. So the person who was engineering the piece said, let me call, you know, the head of sports at the time, a guy named Phil Dugas. So Phil comes out of his house, he comes down to CBC at like 2.30 in the morning, and he goes, just tell me the story the way you would tell your friends. Huh. So I said, okay. So I told him the story the way I would tell my friends. And he goes, okay, that's it. That's a cut. That's what we're going to run in the morning. And Fantastic. I said, pardon me? He said, I just want you to sound like yourself. And now, to me, that was I was fortunate that I had someone like that in my corner from the Giddy app, right? He was trying yeah. to tell me to have my own authentic voice. But I worked in a place where that wasn't happening throughout the whole building at all. And mm. I mean, I would always hear what I call code for... Well, he doesn't sound authoritative enough or, you know, her, her voice isn't, um, it just isn't the right sound we're looking for. And I, and I would always challenge her, like, what's the right sound? What's the right voice? Like, what are we measuring it against? But nobody says it, like, openly what it is, right? It just doesn't sound correct or mm -hmm. right or appropriate for the air. And so you never get at the underlayers of what, we're, what they're actually trying to say, right? And I've heard people actually in this building say they don't like accents on the radio. Like, I've heard people say that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so, flat out say Like that. flat yeah. out say they yeah. don't like accents on the radio. So when you hear that kind of thing, when you're trying to be on air and you're an on-air personality and you may have an accent or you may not sound like the, quote, whatever sound they're looking for, I don't even know how to describe it because it's never really, artic you know, ever been, you know, described to me perfectly. Mm -hmm. You try and sound like everybody else on the radio. So even though you may come from a different background or a different place or have a different experience, you try to fit in because you want to be on air and you want to do your job. And so the best way to do your job is to try and, sound like everybody else. So as the chair of CBC's Radio Inclusion and Diversity Committee, what steps have you taken, Nick, to, to address this issue? Well, I mean, in, in my own space, right, like in, in, I desperately try and always develop diverse talent. And I try desperately to find diverse talent within the building and say, okay, what opportunities can we give this person? Can we get them on here to do a holiday program? Can we get them on here mm -hmm. to be backfill hosts? Can we get them on here to do different things? And we have to try and encourage people that these are the right people to do it. And, and that encouragement's not always easy. Like, it's not always an easy choice for people to say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to take, you know, this person today, even though they've never really been on air before. But even though we believe they have the potential or the ability, we think our jobs help develop. So in my role, it's always trying to identify people, identify talent, and people who we think can be, uh, you know, taught or trained or accepted is what I, I would rather say is probably the more accurate word, that, and trusted that they can actually do the job. And it's, Embrace will be yeah, another. Yeah, and it's tough, right? But that's what we're trying to do is identify yeah. talent, identify people, make people meet each other, create opportunities where people are in a room together, they get to hear people, see that they actually have the ability and the talent. And then hopefully, <laughs> it's only a hope because we cannot force people right. to do things in this environment. You know what I mean? It's about trying to encourage and and make sure people accept people for what they really are. And Mariel, in your 14 years here, have you seen a positive change in that direction? No, nah, not really. Hmm. Uh, no, I think, you know, the CBC is doing poorly to say the least when it comes to diversity. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You be the judge. Okay. You know, no matter where you are, uh, just listen to the hosts on your local CBC radio station um, and then he try to see if they have some sort of accent. And then step outside of your door 
and then, you know, go to the bank teller, talk to your doctor, to the pharmacist, right. whoever you deal with, and hear those accents and then compare the two. Right. I mean, well, the CBC has Sukyun Lee, Matt Galloway. I'm a brown dude. I'm sitting here. You have an accent. So, I mean, it's not like these people aren't here. But, I mean, the, I guess the question might be, do they feel the pressure to talk a certain way? Do you ever feel that well, pressure to report and, a certain And that way? would be my challenge. Let's see if, you know, if you don't say your name. Right. Will they know mm. that you're brown? If Su Kien Lee doesn't say her name, mm. how does she sound? You tell me. But yeah. there, there is a thing, though, about around, like, the cadence of, of how we speak and uh, the rhythm of our voices and all mm -hmm. those kinds of things that, that, to me, I my name, Nick Davis, does not sound like a guy who was born in Jamaica, sure. raised in a Jamaican household, can speak patois, loves reggae music. But I think my cadence and the way I carry myself and some of the references I make. I mean, it was, it was like I mean, your guest said about references, right? Like that's one of the things that 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 always dates us and always makes us seem like we're not actually with the times, right? As as, as a public broadcaster, right. it's some of our references. And when you have younger hosts and and uh, diverse hosts in terms of women, um, in terms of different regional hosts, like I mean, how many times do you hear a host with a Newfoundland accent, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's 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 like when you when you hear those things, the references they make make it clear that even though they may not sound or have an accent, but it, the reference, the references they make, the things they connect with, the way they look at stories, I mean, people who are from those places recognize it immediately. Yeah. So, like, a lot of people may not know that I'm a black man based on my name, but a lot of people, based on my perspective from my years of telling stories on the radio, would make an assumption that, well, he's probably not white. Right. You know what I mean? Even though I don't sound, well, I don't think I do, but I'm sure people think otherwise, right? Yeah. And I do think that, you know, and, and Marielle's, um, I mean, she's right. CBC overall, I think, needs to do a much better job of reflecting, you know, I mean, the, the diversity of the entire country, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have a lot of young voices on the radio at CBC, you know what I mean? Like, we're, 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 we have to get to a place where we actually look and sound like the country that we serve, right? And, and we're not doing the best job of it. Regionally, in some pockets, we do, we do do a good job in some regions, right? Like, yeah. And even in those regions where I think we do a good job, like places like Toronto and Vancouver, we could still do better because when you think about a place like Toronto, more than half the population is diverse. Right. And I don't know if you hear the radio because we're, we're constricted by the, the, the network schedule, right? So the local programming is on at a certain time, then it goes to network programming for the rest of the day. And the network programming definitely does not reflect what right. that audience is That's a question, That's right? Local. That's yeah. local. How are we reflect. doing on a national yeah. level versus a regional local level? Is, yeah. it, is it better in one place than the other? Well, that's my challenge. Yeah. Just, you know, just go and listen to your radio mm -hmm. and see if you are being uh, represented there. And right. I can tell you that, you know, I live in the GTA. I work in Toronto. And when, when I hear local radio hosts on my local CBC radio, I do not hear myself yeah. nor right. my neighbor. Okay, well, so it seems like we all agree here. I mean, and maybe even the CBC agrees that this is important. Who doesn't agree? Do listeners, are listeners afraid of this change? Well, I don't think, I don't think we, we trust listeners enough. I think sometimes a, a small number of voices who make a lot of noise somehow catch the attention of certain people and say, well, we got to change. We can't do that because we got a letter from someone who said, oh, they didn't like to hear that on the radio. It's like the letters you got about, you know, Shad. The, about Shad, right? Saying dope. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. right. So h how many people who heard Shad say dope, like I did when I heard the show, thought yeah. that's unbelievable. It's so welcoming. It's so, that's it's cool point. and cool, right? But I didn't write in, <laughs> right? Right. But somehow the voice of the person who wrote in somehow speaks volumes, right? I mean, yeah. we used to play diverse music on Metro Morning when I first started, and it was like a huge problem for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I felt the problem was more inside than it was outside. Like, I really believe that because I think a lot of people enjoyed the fact that we were playing music that reflected the communities that we were serving that, that live in the city of Toronto, right? Sure. But we didn't hear – very few people write in to say, hey, I love you. Although we did have people write in, but nowhere near – it's like somehow those, those voices are muted as opposed to the voices of the people who complain and hate it, right? And somehow mm -hmm. we take that way more seriously for some bizarre reason. Instead of understanding that we're probably appealing to a lot more people like it, who just start writing in or probably don't even know we're doing it. So how do we get the word out that we're actually doing stuff that's different too, But it's right? also a matter of belonging, mm -hmm. right? When you're not, when you don't hear yourself on the radio, then how do you claim it your own? Right. It's very difficult, mm -hmm. right? How, what's, what's the pattern? Am I really included? Is this really for me? And what Ginger I was saying was the same thing, right? Well, maybe it's, I'm not the public that mm -hmm. they're, they're aiming for. Well, we can always be hopeful that this change is coming, right? Change is Let's slow, hope. right? I yeah, know, but but we, when when do we stop saying that change is slow and yeah. we actually yeah. make changes, right? And 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 Tendra makes a really good point just around feeling like you belong to something. 
the the problem is that in places like Toronto and in the United States, you have other places I can get what I want. Like I can go and listen to ten other reggae shows every single morning in the city yeah. of Toronto. So that's why I don't make a big deal about the fact that maybe the public broadcaster's not doing it, and maybe the public broadcaster has to do a better job of reaching out to those people and saying, "Hey, we actually want to hear your voices and hear what you're doing." Absolutely, because it's very difficult when you come from outside, mm -hmm. you know, from a different country where your credentials uh, mean absolutely nothing to those uh, in power here. It's very difficult to break in, very, very hard. In the 14 years that I've been here, again, I haven't seen that much change. So it's time to stop preaching and start doing. Well, we'll leave it there. Thank you both for joining me. I'm glad we could have this conversation today on Q.